Agarwal, Mr. Murtani, all the other dignitaries on the guys, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start with a question. What is the most powerful weapon India and other ones have to change India and to change the whole world? Of course, you know the answer. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. This is a quote, and it was Nelson Mandela who said this once, and it is my opinion as well, and it's an undiluted fact. I attend many conferences throughout the year on different topics and different problems that need to be solved, but almost every problem we have in the future and currently can be solved with one key, education. A good education today leads to a better world tomorrow. And with these words again, I'd like to extend a warm and hearty welcome to all of you who have come together to this education summit. For making India a $5 trillion economy by 2024 to 25, that's the slogan of the event also, and Dr. Agarwal mentioned the figures on the one side, the $5 trillion, but he also mentioned another five, the growth rate. And if we do mathematic calculations, somehow the results may not fit together. So that means we need to interchange some figures at whatever end. And uh, that is uh, what we look at as a problem. Of course, look to try to contribute to a solution to that problem. And therefore, so it's an ambitious goal, but we are also ambitious in what we want to do and how PhD and other ones can contribute. It is important to understand just education is where it all starts. A good economy in the future is based on a good education today. But let us be clear, here education is not merely about creating manpower, which is able to contribute to economic growth. More importantly, it is all about empowering the citizens to make right choices, which go beyond the economic to the social realm and sustainable dimension. Education is all about creating global citizens who are conscious of their responsibilities towards the society, the nation, and the world. The national education policy of 2019 was a huge step to implement a better education system in India. The political focus must remain on this crucial issue. Why? Because this initiative is only the beginning. India, again, with 500 million, not population, the five comes again, so Banj, five is an important figure in India. Uh, the 500 million is the population below 18 years. If you look to other countries, this is six, almost seven times the entire population of Germany. So this 500 million is just a demography so far. And now comes the other element. This demographic figures of 500 million, we need to change also into the demographic dividend. And that is where education plays a tremendous role to get that figures into the right direction. So it's the largest number of under 18 in the world. And the challenge of providing good education to so many people is a key issue for India in the coming decades. A key question for the economy, but also a key question for the society as a whole. India is now facing the big and long transformation from a merely agriculturally structured country towards a leading state of modern technology. And this economic transformation is quite successful but even in the economy, the most important capital is not the money being put in, but it's the human capital. And human capital is coming with education. For example, there is no artificial intelligence without human intelligence, what has been put in before. No machine learning without human learning. And we are here to discuss the next steps that need to be taken to achieve this transformation successfully. I'm pleased that we're hearing numerous experts here who will help us to answer this question. 
and as the Conrad Adenauer Foundation, which I represent, I'm pleased to partner with PhD in this event. And as most of you know, we have a very long history of partnership with PhD in India. Our foundation, named after the first German Chancellor, Conrad Adenauer, is a foundation active in India since 1968. We are involved in many fields and many issues, but also in, if we talk for education and education itself, of course, worldwide we are currently supporting about 3,500 young people with educational scholarships. Of course, we cannot cover the 500 million, but we can contribute to it, and that's what we're doing. The German educational system is certainly not perfect, but it is considered a role model for many. I think there are two main reasons for that. Firstly, a few years ago, also their politicians understood what the quote from Nelson Mandela said so wonderfully. Education must be the top priority, both in the political agenda and in financial considerations to make it possible. <laughs> Investment in education pays off in the long term more than in many other areas. And secondly, in Germany, great importance is attached to the fact that education is never something that is only for a certain class of people. Education must be something open for every citizen. That is why in Germany, both school education, and you may be surprised, even university education are free of charges. So we don't know tuition fees or such things. Education is free, you have enough to do to uh, take care of your living expenses as a student, but you don't pay tuition fees. This leads to the fact that every person, no matter in which circumstances he or she grew up, has the chance of advancement. This increases social mobility and leads to a better social climate. Ultimately, it also bundles resources and brings a country forward economically. <coughs> Opportunities for advancement, advancement for everyone in society are an important building block for a good society and a successful economy. And I'm, I'm only telling you how we have done it. I don't say you have to copy it, you have to find your own way, but uh, the way we have done it, looking at our economic figures at our standing, I think we haven't done too bad with this education. So the goal of an economy must be growth, but also, and I have to come back to our second chance, and the first was Conrad Adenauer, second one Ludwig Erhard, and he described it with the slogan, prosperity for all. So economic growth shouldn't lead only to some areas, it should lead to prosperity for all. That's an important point. Coming back to that, and I know that PhD is a strategic thinking institution, so they know that if we put investment into economy, into, into education now, it's a long-term goal. It's difficult to have the results already in three years or in four years. So they're thinking ahead and know that, of course, the principle remains a good education will lead to a good Indian economy. On that, I would like to close. I wish all of you a very interesting and hopefully very fruitful discussion and results to be born. Thank you and have a good day.